we're here today to talk about fraud during the elections, but if we look at not only the OSC, but the Council of Europe, progressively, they're showing an improvement in the election process. How do we explain this? Well, I don't think any of us are under the delusion that democracy is taking root in Armenia uh, over the course of these past 20 years, and uh, the people are able to express their will. Uh, there's something else going on. And our thesis is, is in a report that uh, uh, we prepared on the parliamentary elections and also on uh, uh, press releases on this election, is that election fraud has become more sophisticated and it's become more hidden. And it's not as easy to observe, especially on the part of foreigners who come into the country and try to understand what's going on in that context. And I'm going to show you uh, a number of relatively new tests that use statistical, it's the lie at the nexus of political science and statistical analyses, which can reveal or detect election fraud using the very numbers that are collected and distributed by the Electoral Commission of uh, the Republic of Armenia. So I'm going to tell you about uh, maybe TOPS two forensic tests that Policy Forum Armenia applied again to the data presented by the Central Electoral Commission of Armenia. Okay, the first test uh, relates to the voter turnout at uh, versus the number of polling stations in the country. Everyone knows what voter turnout is. When Obama was elected, there was I don't know 60 or 65 percent. I don't remember what the turnout was. Here, what we're going to do is we're going to look at individual polling stations themselves and calculate the number of voters who voted. Uh, divided by the number of registered voters at the polling station. In other words, the voter turnout at each polling station. Now, ideally, this is a random number. Statistically, these are independent of random events. And what we should get when we, count, when we graph the number of polling stations versus the percent voter turnout, just to give you an example, let's say we look at a voter turnout percent of 60%, and we count how many polling stations report a voter turnout of 60%. From this graph, we see about 50 polling stations reported 60% voter turnout. Ideally, we would get a distribution that looks like this. This is the normal distribution, or the Gaussian distribution. This is also called the bell curve for all you students in the audience. You know all about this. If there is a deviation from this normal dis distribution, we have to somehow uh, account for, uh, for it. So what do we see from the data from the Central Electoral Commission? This is what we more or less expect to get this uh, those uh, the hatch the dotted uh, black line and this is what we do get from the <coughs> election committee. this hump this uh, inflation on the right side of uh, of the bell curve of the normal distribution uh, tells us that there's something funny going on in fact this is usually an indicator of inflated voter turnout due to either ballot stuffing or some other manipulation of the vote count. Uh, in, if we look at it historically, from 2008, this is a rather normal curve. Uh, moving on to 2007, 2012, progressively we're getting more and more abnormal uh, voter turnout curves. This is a tip-off to us that something is happening here. In fact, if we think about it, uh, the OSCE has been reporting less and less fraud on the ground at the voting stations, but they're also seeing less and less uh, of these types of anomalies because these are anomalies that are not that don't show up at the polling stations. They're not people stuffing ballots uh, with votes right in front of the observer's eyes. There's a different phenomenon here, which I'll get to in a moment. Uh, if we look out the the same curves, but split between the two candidates and we look at the voter turnout for the incumbent Serge Sarkisian and the challenger Rafi Owenis and one of the challengers we see that for Serge Sarkisian the voter turnout is greatly inflated I mean there are some uh, voting stations with a hundred percent voter turnout this is rather unlikely to be put mildly and uh, for uh, Rafi Owenis's case we see a, a large number of polling stations with a low turnout which implies that there's been a switch, there's been a, a, a wading away from Rafi Ovenisian towards uh, Serge Sarkisian in, in the voter count. Uh, how, how they do this, I'll get to in a moment. This is, there's a second test that I'd like to show you. 
This is called the digit test. This is a very interesting test because it relies on a bias that humans have when they are asked to generate a number. If I asked everyone in this room to generate a three-digit number, uh, and I looked at the last digit of each number that everyone generated, we would see that there's not a one in ten chance that each of the digits would appear. There's a, there's a bias because of some psychological phenomena in our minds. So what the digit test does, it looks at the vote count of each polling station, and here's a, just a, a list of vote counts, and it takes everything off except the last digit. And we look at the distribution or the number of these last digits. Ideally, there should be an equal number of twos as nines, as zeros, etc. There should be a uniform distribution or probability of getting any of these digits. If there isn't, then we know that someone has been tampering with the vote count because it's a human bias that appears through the, through the digit test. So let's take a look at what we see. Uh, in Yerevan and Yuri, let's look here first. Uh, these are the digits that we're looking at, and this is the probability of the digit appearing. Should be one in, a 10% chance of any digit appearing. And within uh, our error margins, we see that, in fact, it's pretty fair. There has not been much tampering of the vote count in Yerevan and Gumri. And we saw, in fact, in Gumri where the vote, who the vote went to. Uh, this number here shows that there's a very high chance that this is a very naturally occurring distribution. Okay? But let's look at the rural areas outside of Yerevan and Gumri. This digit and these digits are way out of their error bounds, which means that there's been human influence. This is a sign of bureaucratic fraud. So the person who was at the office counting the votes uh, decided to round off the votes perhaps uh, or you know, uh, creatively account for some votes. And when they were doing this, they didn't know that psychologically they have a bias towards certain numbers and against others. And therefore, this type of bureaucratic fraud was revealed through the digit test. How am I doing? Five more. Okay, I, I, I'll, I'll make it. Um, this is another test which I, if we have time at the end, I can, uh, I can talk about, which shows that uh, the, uh, as voter turnout increases in different polling stations, Serge Sarkisan was getting more and more votes coming to him, while Rafi Hovhannisian was getting fewer and fewer. In fact, this graph shows that votes that should have gone to Rafi Hovhannisian were going, in fact, to Serge Sarkisan. We can go into the details if we have time later on. Now, uh, PF, uh, Policy Forum Armenia uh, performed those analyses based on the data that was available by the Central Electoral Commission of Armenia, but other people have also used the same data and come up with uh, similar uh, graphs and conclusions. This is uh, from Frederick Silberg, who is the, one of the gurus who pioneered this type of statistical analysis for, to detect election fraud. And he, in fact, took the data from the Armenian elections, and his conclusion was the protesters are right. There was definitely fraud during the elections. Uh, there are also Russian uh, political scientists who analyze the data. I'm just showing you their graphs, uh, and showing you the Russian, showing also uh, these anomalous humps in the uh, voter distribution curves. <coughs> so what, is, what can account for this anomaly? We have the uh, the OSCE saying over time things are things are looking better, but we have data that shows us that, that things are not as as they seem as they appear. Uh, we conjecture and we have a pretty good reason to believe that the problem is with the voter list itself. The problem is that there are many many eligible voters that remain on the voter list who are no longer in Armenia, and this list of voters who cannot vote in absentia, because Armenia does not have the law or mechanism to do that, uh, this list of voters is a tool in the hands of the authorities to, to basically manipulate the vote any way they want. And uh, the tests that we show uh, at least correlate with the fact that many of the uh, normal distributions that we should have seen from the votes are skewed or distorted in a way that indicates people have tampered with the vote. Uh, I will, I will tell you uh, 
briefly about my meetings with the international or the European observers. And they range from the OSCE to the Parliamentary Assembly members and to the Council of Europe. I had uh, appearances actually in the days leading up to the election where I was provided an opportunity to speak uh, before these delegations. Uh, in my dialogues with Heidi, uh, yeah, which was the head of the mission uh, for the uh, uh, in my dialogue with uh, the Parliamentary Assembly for Cuba, my dialogue with the President of the Parliamentary Assembly, uh, Mr. Mikio Iri from uh, Italy, uh, the Deputy Secretary General of the PA, uh, Parliamentary Assembly from Denmark, Tina Schoen, uh, and uh, the British representative, Sandra Kaduri. Uh, we're all uh, rather informative for me, someone who is really not uh, a political person, if you will, because they were all uniform in their, in their uh, position that, that, that they were not really there to ensure free and fair elections, that in fact that was not the standard that they adhered to. Uh, and how telling it was that the day after the elections when I attended the uh, press conference of, uh, of these various bodies, uh, when I met with these individuals again, the representative from England said, uh, Mr. Bazarian, we're going to regret this decision just like we regretted the decision we previously made in another part of the world because in two weeks uh, it's going to come out how rampant the irregularities were. But you must understand that our decision is a geopolitical one and specifically if we are to invalidate the elections here uh, we would be duty bound to start proceedings or consider uh, expelling the Republic of Armenia from the various European bodies that it belongs to. Uh, none other than uh, the former foreign minister of Ireland, uh, who uh, retired as justice minister of Ireland, who looked me up on the flight back to Paris, Dermot Avern, uh, put it best, because he said that in his 32 years of practice, he had never seen anything more outrageous than that, which he observed on the day of the elections, and he specifically referred to uh, uh, a particular precinct where the votes were going in one direction, opposition vis-a-vis -vis Mr. Lovanisian, 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 and then every third or fourth one was Mr. Sarkisian. But lo and behold, at the end of the, uh, at the, end of the night, uh, uh, the numbers were not exactly reflective of what he had observed. Uh, my personal observations on the day of the elections were troubling because uh, I saw one instance that was that was outrageous in the sense that those who approached the precinct were met by two gentlemen who, uh, who, were, uh, who were sitting in a car right at the entrance uh, of, the, of the building, if you will. Uh, one was handing documents uh, to the person approaching uh, him. The other one was handing an envelope. The documents appeared to be the uh, identifying information that had been previously taken uh, from this voter, and the envelope um, uh, I visually observed to contain funds, which the person would count and put in their pocket, and the other piece of paper, which several of whom I approached uh, and I asked to sh for them to show me, were uh, pre-noted ballots uh, uh, already chosen uh, to be cast for uh, the incumbent president. Um, the day, the day of the elections in Armenia. Um, was, uh, was a sad day for me, and, and when the European uh, observers talk about progress, I talk about principles. I talk about principles before personalities, because it seems to us that uh, we, we, uh, as Armenian Americans, or as Armenian French, or Armenian Italians, or Armenians, citizens of Armenia, um, if we are going to consider being a good Armenian is one that applauds, uh, applauds progress, yes, that is, that is essential. Uh, is that all that requires of us? Uh, I, dare say, I dare say not, because all the talk that we hear 
about free and fair elections, all the talk that we hear about progress uh, is for naught. Is for naught when the free will of, of people is, uh, is questioned. When you have consistent violations over a period of 30 days before elections, how can we now talk about the will of the people, whoever they cast their vote for, was their free will? Um, it, it defies logic. Uh, I have incredible amount of instances of report, uh, uh, reported instances that I have uh, at my disposal, and I'm happy to share as to the five areas that I discussed pre-elections, and as for the day of the elections, uh, I, I assume I'm certain that all of you who are there uh, have read and are aware of the busings from regions, uh, ha ha are all the more aware about the disappearing game and all the other uh, instances that uh, have been widely reported. What, what boggles one's mind is what is, what is the Armenian diaspora afraid of? Are we afraid that if we question uh, the fairness of the process, that we are really not being good Armenians because we are endangering our country, which is surrounded by uh, not so friendly nations? Uh, I think an, an Armenia that is democratic within is an essential first step uh, for a strong Armenia that can uh, deal with the rest of the world. And I hope to see that day in my lifetime. Thank you. Hi, my name is Narna Smiley. I'm a volunteer with Transparency International here in Armenia with the Birthright Program. I was an observer at the presidential elections yesterday, February 18, 2013. Um, I was stationed in Artashat Village, 17-5 district, um, and I experienced cheating and harassment. I just want to tell my story. Um, as soon as I entered the polling place at around 8 a.m., it was pretty obvious the commission members, as well as the proxies and the other observers, were unwilling to cooperate, and they were going to push us around. Um, the secretary initially told us that we had to stay in one place, even though it's our right to walk around and observe. Um, we argued with her, and she was very mean, and she told us that if we get in her way, she'll call the police and arrest us immediately. Um, as soon as the voting process started, uh, we noticed that a few people, my partner and I noticed that a few people were coming in more than once to vote. Um, we stopped them and also some people came in with false identification passports belonging to other people or passports that already had stamps in it. Because we were watching so closely and we were intent on making sure that no cheating occurred, um, the commission members as well as proxies from the Republican Party obviously coordinated with each other and decided to plan an attack and cheat that way. Um, around 2.30, a group of people walked in. I told the officer, the police officer that was standing by the door to make sure that only 15 people came in at once because that's the rule. Um, then I noticed around 25 to 30 men also walked in. They surrounded the ballot box in which the secretary was sitting next to. I approached them, I grabbed one of the men's arms to tell them to not to touch the ballot box. Um, he pushed me against the wall and held my hands like this. And from where I was standing, I was able to see that the secretary of the commission cut open the ballot box seals and one of the men poured a bag full of ballots into the box. She resealed it and they ran out. I couldn't do anything and I wasn't able to videotape it because they held me up. And they held my partner up as well, but they had done their deed already. Um, when I approached the secretary and told her why she I asked her why did she allow such a thing to happen and I asked the proxies, even the proxies of the other party members, why they would allow such a thing to happen. And they just simply told me that nothing happened and they didn't see anything and they don't know what I'm talking about. Um, so I called several reporters, I called um, Transparency, I called different people to tell them what happened. Um, I was also told it would be a good idea to call the police station and see if they had any suggestions of what to do. 
Um, when the policeman arrived, um, the village leader came along with them. And ironically enough, his son was the one who had pushed me against the wall. The village leader, as with the cops, um, they surrounded me against the wall. And they told me that I'm a good girl and that if I don't want any trouble, especially considering that I'm a foreigner from America, that I should refrain from saying anything else about the cheating process and I should refrain from saying anything about Serge Sarkisian's campaigning process and that I should just remain quiet and not tell, talk to any more reporters. Um, at that moment I was really, really angry. So I called some other reporters and told them what happened, but the rest of the time I was in the polling place, they were following me and I felt harassed. But at this point the deed was done, they had poured whatever they needed to pour into the ballot box. Um, when counting started, um, it was obvious that the number of voters was not equal to the number of ballots in the box. I stood behind the president of the commission and counted as she counted the signatures and her number was above mine by about 200 people. Um, I'm guessing the number of ballots they stuffed though was around 400 because at 2 o'clock, about half an hour before the incident happened, I, had a t I counted my tally that I kept myself and it was about at 500. Um, but after the incident, it seemed like the ballot box w doubled, so I guess about 400, 500 were stuffed. Um, but at the end of it, when all the counting for all the candidates were done, the numbers of the signatures, the numbers of the ballots, the numbers of the envelopes left over did not match at all, even with their cheating. So it was obvious that something had gone wrong. Um, also, when they initially opened the seals of the ballot box to show that nothing had happened, um, they pretended as if it was a struggle to open the ballot box, but it was clear that it had, had been cut open, and one of the sides, the side that the secretary held open, was completely open. So. The proxies, the other observers, and the commission members were obviously in on the whole thing. And did you report this to the OSCE? And did they observe? And had they observed this too? Yes, I. Um, they came around in the beginning of the day, and they saw that there were no major problems, so they left. But when they found out what had happened to me and what happened to my partner in our, our bowling place, um, they came back in secret at first. I met them at the side of the building then they realized that I might be in danger, my partner might be in danger, and the polling place was just a mess. So they decided to come back during the, vote, um, during the counting of the votes, um, and they witnessed the ballot box being opened, and they were shocked to what happened. They were, they were in disbelief that such, such, <laughs> such a thing could happen. And were the OSC, in their statement today, did the OSCE acknowledge this event at all? No, they did not, even though this is probably the biggest cheating in all of Armenia. 400 votes, that's a lot. Precinct, Parashat, 17-5. 17 yes. Garagin Nizdehi Dira Katari Amar Ser Sarkisyan Yer Thumna Kalutyunu Tone. No, I'm going to run the car and run the car. I'm going to run the car and run the car. I'm going to run the car and run the car. I'm going to run the car and run the car. I'm going to run the car and run the car. I'm going to run the car and run the car. I'm going to run the car and run the car. Tu tu kahar jivan gas perani neta krikiel chak kekzalen na khaga introduktioner tevoch ink meg bangiti esorva na khaga har lavne. Na wa yergi de kan kasi es kan beke na kai. Isk vor tech chen kekzu ma Amerikayu mele na khaga intervun kekz introduktioner of saar teno ke vor akani te sa kete hava te kare vor oga smartun paste pet vor pisi ye kekz sin hava te kekzik nerin. Kan paste kan kartzik ner. Եսել շատ բանի մասին կարող եմ կարծիք ունեն, հա։ Նաթան արքեպիսկոպոսին դուր չի գալիս այն որ ազատության հրապարակի ժողովուրդը կաթողիկոսից պահանջում է չորնել Սերժ Սարգսյանի երթմնակալությունը։ Ո՞վ է մեկ, նախ եւ առաջ։ Կաթողիկոսին իրավունք չունի եւ չի կարող պարտադրել անելու, այն ինքը ինչ պետք է անի։ Կաթողիկոսի եղբայրը առաջին անգամ էր լսում, որ Փետրվարի 18-ից մինչև մա ազատության հրապարակում վիճարկում են Սերժ Սարգսյանի լեգիտիմությունը եւ որ Կաթողիկոսը գորշ ունի Սերժ Սարգսյանի հետ։ Ժողովուրդի այդ ցանկությունները պետք է լինեն մեծամասնության հետ։ Եվ պետական իշխանության հետ։ Դրա գրողների համարանը կկալեր БХК խմբակցության անդամ Գուրգեն Արսենյանի ներկայությունը։ Ինքն առաջին անգամ չի ել թաքցնում։ Իր համար Սերժ Սարգսյանը լեգիտիմ նախագահ է։ Սա մենք հատանի կողմից 
հաստատվել է, որ ընտրված նախագը հանդիսանում է Սեր Սարգսի։ Հենց նույն պատճարով այսօր Սեր Սարգսյանի եղբոր համար ուրախության և հպարտության որ է, իսկ ահազատության հրապարակում տեղի ունեցող զուգահեռ � Ինչպես եմ, ես ուրախ եմ, որ առանց մենց կանչվերսի մենք ունեցան ընդունելի ընդրությումը և գարձեմ այդ դարպերությունը, որ գար այդ թիվերում մեջ, թե բարոն Սարկիսյանը, որ կան կվեր պերավ և որ կան ռավին պերավ, ադիկաց հեվով մը ժողովորդին սկացում ներ արդը հայտվեցավ, շատ կանուղ ընդրությունները վերջանալ եմ մերջ, Աշխարը ընդունեց բարոն Սեր Սարկիսյանի ընդրությունը, ադիկա շատ կարևոր գետ մներ ռավին որ ընպրներ, եթե աշխարը գնդունի գոր նոր բայքար մջը սկսի։ And we have to recognize that there is a trouble and we have to help each one without any bloodshed, without any controversies, without making any noises or raising any smoke in the world that we have problems.